Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I want to talk a little bit about DaVinci Resolve 17's brand new feature and that is the new proxy workflow. So if you don't know what a proxy workflow is, I've done some videos on it in the past and basically it is a way that the software itself creates a lower resolution version that it can easily play back and speed up you know, your playback during editing in your computer by typically transcoding it in the front. The thing about proxies in particular is you can, of course, create proxies with anything. You can render, you know, with any software and create proxies. But having it inside of the software is quite a bit easier and allows for a much easier workflow. Now, let me give you a quick heads up on something. So you can easily click playback, timeline resolution, and do half and quarter. Now, the thing is, these look awful. And before, there used to be what was called optimized media. And that was basically a proxy but uh, the thing is you weren't actually making files that you could go easily find and relink, where now this proxy workflow is much simpler and you can actually then use the footage to send in like Frame.io or something so you could easily send these. So it's, it's a lot easier, it's a lot better. Um, but anyway, I have some clips here and we're gonna make some proxy media. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna set what your proxy media type is going to be. So in DaVinci Resolve, obviously, which is what we're in, we're gonna go to Project Settings, File, and then this is gonna open up the actual project settings for whatever project we're working on. And if you scroll down in the master settings, you can see the proxy media resolution, proxy media format. So let's say we wanted to do a quarter of the original resolution and we wanna do ProRes uh, 422 proxy. Actually, we'll do half because a quarter is kind of slow or small. So this is going to be changing what your actual proxy file type is. And then down below is gonna be the proxy generation location. So in my case, I'm definitely going to move that because I don't want it to go in that folder. We are going to go to the commercials here. Um, in my case, I'd probably go to project files. I'd create a new one in Resolve. I have a folder called Resolve and I'll call this proxies, right? So that's our new folder, open. Okay, so we have our proxies, half resolution, ProRes 422 proxy and in that media folder. We're gonna click save. I'm gonna select all of these. You can just click control or command A and then I'm going to do generate proxy media. Now, while this is happening, I'm also gonna explain. So there's one right next to what you saw, which was link proxy media. So the great part about this is once this is actually done creating this proxy file, we can actually go back and send these files and relink them. So let's say down the line you you know do something, maybe you're, you, know, you send someone a proxy file and you send them an XML for the timeline, they can then go in and easily relink that. But we'll talk about that more in a minute. Now, obviously the speed in which that this entire process happens is up to your computer. The great part is, is you probably want to do this on import. So you import your footage, you let proxies be created. You then can edit with no problem and then go back and you can of course just relink the original media. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. But again, this all depends on how fast your computer is and what type of footage you actually have. Now this is Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2 Raw, full 4.6K. So this is big files that it's trying to convert here. Okay, so in a couple seconds here, our proxy media is gonna be finished. So obviously again, this totally depends on the length of your clips and how big they are and the file size and file type, all that kind of stuff. So right now, if we go to playback, we can see use proxy media if available. And then of course the toxic, uh, pro timeline proxy mode, that's again, our normal uh, sort of half quarter resolution. So we don't wanna mess with this now because this is proxy files that are being viewed. So now when we watch these back, we're actually watching back those proxy files. Now the difference is, is that when we do this, we're utilizing that older file. So remember when you're color grading and doing things like that, you wanna make sure to probably turn it off just the use proxy media if available. That will of course go back to the originals and then you can click on it, relink it. Now let's say you didn't you know, want to actually use these and uh, or let's say, I'm sorry, you were importing these or uh, whatever, you can unlink and link those proxies just like you would in any software or like any file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go find that proxy media file. So I'm gonna actually go in to that folder that we saved it in, uh, that was right here, the project files, and then we did the resolve proxies, proxy media, um, and it does that, which I don't like, but it whatever. The advantage of this is that it's basically the same file structure um, that the original media has. So I get it, granted, it's still just kind of annoying. But um, and in our case, it doesn't really matter because we're not transferring it. But you can see that these are ProRes files 
uh, that we are using. Now, in this case, I would probably never do this because Blackmagic Raw runs pretty well. But if I had a huge project, I would definitely do this. Um, but you can see now these are our ProRes proxy files. So the great thing is, is that we could send this. So for instance, this is six gigabytes, you can see. And if I go back to the original actual footage that we originally had working with, if I go back and I find it. So this is the original footage and you can see that is 60 gigabytes. So that is a 10 times smaller file. And also because I'm using a Mac, it is a much, much easier codec that the software can play and play back and use. So this is great if you're, for obviously a lot of reasons, obviously just of course making your editing and playback much faster, but one of the really cool things that you could do, of course with proxies in general, is actually allow another editor to be in a completely different spot in editing the footage. So for instance, you could import your footage, create proxies, send those proxies to an editor, and you could be doing color work, and they could be doing the editing, and they could send you an XML, and everything can just sync back up to the original media. The other great part is if you're collaborating. So for instance, if Zach and I were going to collaborate over something like Frame.io or whatever it may be, I could easily send him proxies that are a lot smaller, that are much easier to send. And honestly, when it comes to editing, you really can't tell the difference. You really can't tell when I turn those on and off. There's not a massive jump in quality and difference. Uh, but again, if it's something you wanted to do, you could easily turn those on. It's much easier to use. And again, it just makes playback and editing that much faster on a lot of machines too. So this also allows for you to maybe edit really big files on a laptop and maybe have the big files at home and then have the laptop, you know, the smaller files on the laptop on the go. So it's really awesome. And it really just allows for a massive sort of, you know, there's a lot of capabilities you can do with this proxy workflow. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.